I'd like to invite Mike Harris to come down and say a few words, the president of the uh, Australian American Association here in Queensland. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. And it's a beautiful day to be celebrating such a, a wonderful occasion. Um, distinguished guests, and I know there are many historians here today, and I, I better be right about what I'm saying in my speech, so here we go. Uh, on behalf of the Australian American Association in Brisbane, I thank Councillor David McLaughlin, Brisbane City Council Member for Hamilton Board and uh, Chair of Council for his invitation for me to speak to you, as I said, on this momentous occasion. My thanks goes to those who supported this very important project, who petitioned the Council and to the Brisbane City Council itself for its approval of the formal naming and unveiling of the Pensacola Convoy Place plaque at Brett's Wharf today. The success of the Pensacola Convoy Place naming is due to the efforts of many people. Many people already mentioned by David, but I'll include some that I know. And the first would be Mr. Peter Racy, who first brought the petition to our, set, our, so, our attentions by our association, as well uh, Australian author Noel Tunney, and those others who worked uh, on getting the message out on this uh, most important petition. And I'd like to thank David as well for his boundless support and efforts towards the successful installation of this monumental plaque here today, which recognises those who came from far away to our way, think about that, and those who served and who protected us from tyranny and oppression. Just imagine if the invasion had been successful. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a matter of extreme importance in the wartime history of Australia as the birthing of this convoy marked the first arrival of military forces from the United States on Australian soil. At a time when our country was under the most ominous threat of invasion by Japanese forces, you can just imagine in those dark days of December 1941, Australia had been left virtually defenceless. Our Australian Imperial Force, the AIF, was fighting overseas in North Africa at Trabuk, in the Mediterranean Islands, Crete, in the Middle East and in Malaya, as were our RAAF personnel and our Royal Australian Navy ships and crews who were most heavily deployed both overseas in the Mediterranean and other places over there and in Australian waters here. And we Australians were in a very desperate situation, vulnerable and considerably open to attack. And then what happened? Up the Brisbane River, this river came the Pensacola Convoy, carrying, and I'll just, just listen to this, a brigade of US Field Military Corps with 2,000 National Guard troops, 131st Field Artillery, Texas National Guard. Now, Noel told me this morning uh, that uh, they later fought in Java with the AIF, uh, and this was the first joint action by Americans with Australian forces since the First World War, so it was quite a momentous occasion. Then came the 148th Field Artillery, Idaho National Guard, some 2,600 Field Artillery, uh, sorry, uh, US Army Air Force personnel with aircraft, and they were all shipped dis uh, disassembled in crates containing 52 Douglas A-24 dive bombers of the 27th Bombardment Group, 18 uh, Curtis P-40s uh, fighter planes of the 34th Pursuit Group, they were interceptor aircraft, and 48 Pursuit pilots of the 35th Pursuit Group, and 39 newly graduated but unassigned pilots. Now the war material uh, transported by this convoy included many artillery pieces, field artillery pieces, 300 and 500 pound bombs, 340 motor vehicles, 9,000 barrels of aviation fuel, half a million rounds of 50 calibre ammunition, boy were they armed, and numerous rounds of anti-aircraft shell. And what a cargo of fighting men and war materials Uncle Sam brought along to our Christmas celebrations here in December 1941. And although this extent of US uh, service personnel and their military equipment certainly could not have prevented a full-scale Japanese invasion, 
The U.S. Pensacola convoy seen heading up our Brisbane River, escorted by the ships of the Royal Australian Navy and the New Zealand Navy, must have been a most welcome sight to Aussie eyes, especially as they realised here was a distant friend who had come all the way across the Pacific Ocean to offer assistance and protection when these were most desperately needed. And uh, it should also be noted, as reported by our good friend, Australian author Noel Tunney, sitting over there, in his book entitled The Pensacola Convoy, Brisbane, December 1941, <coughs> that the first ever combined operation by the then US Army Air Corps and our own RAAF occurred on the Hamilton Reach of the Brisbane River on the 23rd of December, the day after the convoy arrived, 1941. And uh, they came in a, a form of flying boat, uh, it was called uh, A18-10 Centaurus. There's a plaque over there marking that occasion as well. It was laid by, or unveiled by, Noel Tunney about four or five years ago. And it carried the pursuit and dive bomber pilots sent from the Philippines to Brisbane, and they alighted beside the ships of the Pensacola convoy the next day. It must be remembered that all of these US pilots and their aircraft the U.S. battalions of men and their military equipment from the Pensacola convoy went on in time, as we said before, to fight alongside our Australian forces in many air, land and sea battles in Southeast Asia. And you know, these men, they did contribute to the saving of our country from invasion. And as well as that, they brought the uh, final defeat of our then enemies closer. So they helped in, in both ways. And like our own Australian servicemen and women, many of these US service personnel made the ultimate sacrifice never to return home to their loved ones, which is very saddening indeed when you think about it. This area of Brett's Wharf named Pensacola Convoy Place will now officially acknowledge the birthing of this convoy at Hamilton Wharf, Brisbane on the 22nd of December 1941 and will fervently recognise and remember all those US service personnel who arrived with that convoy. So as uh, a grateful nation, we Australians must always remember those who served and protected us and who paid the price for our freedom, lest we forget. Lest we forget. And such naming today is also an occasion to recognise the mateship and the ensuring significance of Australia's long-term strategic relationship with the United States of America which has been forged since World War I and greatly strengthened following the arrival of the Pensacola Convoy and over many years since that time. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Thank you, David.